Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of an Auto Trail Delaware S. So using the Trimark square key, you'll be able to unlock this side locker here. And then just to help it up, just pop your foot underneath it. And in here you've got two leisure batteries, so two 92 amp hour batteries, two battery fuses, so the 20 amps which are just here. So any problems with getting power and if you've checked the fuses on board and it's not them, just check these for the sake of checking. Hook up point, you get your hook up lead and you always want to hook the motorhome up first rather than the site. So lift it up, hook it on there, hook the site up and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead in your hand. You've also got space to put your leveling ramps and your coiled up hookup lead in there and your water hoses so this is kind of like a wet locker. So nothing that you want to trail in the van that's dirty, just pop in here. At the end you'll see that there is a grey tap. The grey tap is your waste water. So anything that you've put down a plug hole goes into a separate waste holding tank. And what you need to do is when you're leaving your site or when it in indicates that it is full, all you need to do is empty it. So to empty, you just turn the valve and allow the water out. Make sure that you always allow this water out before you start traveling because it's gonna add unnecessary weight to the vehicle. It's gonna impact on your payload and it's gonna impact on your miles per gallon. So you're gonna get worse miles per gallon carrying more weight than you are not, not carrying weight and this is going to contribute to the weight. So if you want to put more bits and pieces on board, make sure you get rid of this because otherwise you could be running overweight. And obviously in the winter, make sure that's fully drained off to avoid it from freezing. Above, you've got storage in here. That's behind the kitchen. This is your external shower hook point. So you've got a hose with a bullfinch end. That clips on there. And when that clips on there, you've got a trigger going at the other end so you can hose the dog off, the boots, the bikes, the kids, whatever you want. But make sure that you drain the hose out and the it can be hot or cold, you can mix it, but obviously the hot water system has got to be on for that to work. So don't think you can just arrive on your site and plug it in straight away because it won't work like that. The hot water system, the boiler has got to have hot water in it. To fill the water, using the habitation key, which is the round headed key, you've got a lockable cap. So you can remove it like so. If it spins and spins and you can't grip it, it's locked. If you can push it in, spin it and pull it out, it's open. Flat end of the hose in the van, the other end of the hose, get a hose lock end and a screw on connection because it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Connect your tap on site, connect the other end and put the flat end into the hose, in the van. Once you've done that, it may overflow, that's totally fine or it may you may be able to look on the control panel and think that's enough water. But it does indicate when there is enough water in 25, 50, 75 and 100% increments on the panel. To get rid of that water, if you're winterizing and you want to drain it down in full water so that it doesn't freeze or you've taken on a source of contaminated water or you're simply just not using the van for a while, you would let the fresh water out of the system by turning this tap like so. Garage area at the back, so you've got your awning, winding handle, your cab carpets there. And you've got a little shelf just up here, which you can access from underneath the bed. On the back of the van, high level brake light, reversing camera, and then under this GRP panel, using the habitation key to remove the auto trail badge, you've got a nut, lift this panel off and you've got a full size spare wheel.
on a winding handle in there and on this vehicle it does have corner steadies so this is a steady handle so similar to a caravan if it's windy you may want to put your legs down not that you're going to need them down all the time but it is better for stability on the motorhome there's a lot more weight in the motorhome than the caravan so that's why caravans have them motorhome you don't need to use them all the time but you may just want to use them so you, you've got quite an overhang from the back wheel to here so if you pop this in here, you can wind the leg down and you've got two on each, either side and it just helps keep stability if it's going to be a windy night, like so. So coming down the driver's side, you've got your awning which is a full Omnistat awning on the top there, which hides in the recess. If you wanted to use a Kadak or external barbecue that you carried in the, bar in the garage with you, instead of carrying a separate bottle for this, what you can do is you can get a bullfinch connection, so a red end which goes into here and turns. On the bottom of it, you'll need a Jubilee clip and you'll need some gas hose, which is orange. It's a rubber hose. You need to connect that to the bullfinch connection and connect that to the barbecue or Kadak, depending on what you're using. Kadak's are one of the best barbecues for motorhomes out there. Then you'll be able to turn it on and this will allow the gas from on board the vehicle to be used to this point to allow you to cook outside without carrying a separate bottle. So that's your external gas point. This is your flue for your heaters and it gives a location of where the boiler is on board so it'll be underneath your bed on this side. Just make sure that's always obstruction free if you are putting an awning on the side of the van. Little catch there to keep the garage door back. Cassette toilet. So your cassette toilet again opens with a habitation key then you need to push both sides in to pull the door out. And to get the cassette out you need to lift the orange handle and slide the cassette out of the vehicle. You can then carry it or you can wheel it to your disposal point. Well, your disposal point is normally situated beside your toilet block and shower block on site and to get rid of it, take the grey cap off, pop that to one side for a moment. Tip the contents out of the cassette but as you start tipping just squeeze this orange button, allows it to consistently flow out of the cassette and stop it glugging. Once you've done that, pop some water in, so there's normally a tap, you rinse it out, then go on with a cap full of chemical, which is 120 mil. So this can be green or blue, ask your site which they prefer you to use, because green's now environmentally friendly for their septic tanks for getting rid of it. So just ask which one they want you to use, and then once you've put the chemical in it, you can push it straight back into the van. You've got your two fridge vents, your awning light, your step, which will automatically come out. So on the key, you've got unlock the front, so the two carved doors, locks everything, unlocks this back door on its own. So when you unlock the back door, the step will come out. When you start the engine, this will automatically retract. If you want to take it in or out, there's a button just here which will retract it and bring it out but the engine does have to be switched off for it to come back out so if the engine's on and you're wondering why the step won't come out it's because it's a safety feature where when the engine started it automatically retracts to avoid damage of the step and whatever's around you lpg so normally on this vehicle it would take two standard propane bottles which normally on these you can get a 13 and a 6 in but this customer has specifically asked for a gas low system so a gas low system is a refillable system so the bottles don't need to come off when they're empty you just fill it back up and to fill it back up you've got a filler in the skirt here so it's a bayonet fitting you'd go to your local LPG centre which you can get an app and find them in the, this country 
but they're more widely available abroad so if you are planning on going abroad with your motorhome you may want to fit one of these just because trying to get a standard colour bottle abroad is a nightmare it's different fittings and then once you've got their bottle bringing it back here you're never going to get a bottle like that again so what you can do is you can go to the LPG centre and it's like a filler gun so it fits on clips on the bayonet fitting by turning it and locking it on and then you pull the trigger gun back there's a trigger on there which pressurizes the filling gun to the vehicle and then you press and hold the button it's normally a black green or red button which you just press and hold on the filler it will go up in litres and you'll see the pounds going up as well once that's full it will stop once it's stopped you'd release the trigger unscrew it off the van hang it back up put your cap back on and that is the bottles full but to get into the locker behind this seat you pull this back as the locker doors on the cable system that's how it releases the gas flow the gas locker and you can see your gas lower bottles so these are two 11 kilogram gas lower bottles to view the levels of them on the top there so you can see once they're in the green they're full making sure that when you arrive on your when before you travel you turn them off so you go to the minus and you turn them off and when you arrive on site you turn them on once one's empty because it's got a manual changeover there's a little nib here and it's pointing to this bottle so whatever gas appliance you use on board the vehicle is going to draw the gas from this bottle here the front bottle when the front bottle becomes low or empty you can turn it this can go red indicates that it's empty you can turn this to that bottle so it's now on the back bottle so any gas appliance you use will use the back bottle but when you fill it fills both bottles together because it prioritizes one bottle which i think which will be this bottle once this bottle's full it then kicks off the gas to this bottle so when filling you don't have to change it over to fill each individual bottle it'll just fill it by itself so to fill the vehicle with fuel using the main ignition key at the passenger door you've got a lockable diesel cap so you can fill with fuel Tire pressures, so to find your tire pressures, they're on here. So the 79.5 psi, which is five and a half bar front and back. Your tool kit to change the wheel, so it's underneath the seat. So this will just pull off and it'll just slide out. So release the, turn this cap here, slides out. Jack and a brace, tow and eye in there, a screwdriver. So everything you need to be towed off the road or to change the wheel. Battery, engine battery's underneath the floor, so that's got a cover on, so that just comes off and you can get to the top of the battery should you ever need to replenish it in years to come or put a charger on over the winter, you can. And your bonnet release is just here. So all your fluids are to the left hand side underneath the driver's side of the vehicle, so you've got your screen wash. This cover comes off on the scuttle and you can fill your power steering fluid, your coolant, and then next to it you have your brake fluid. With your oil filler and dipstick. To jump start the vehicle from underneath the bonnet, this is your earth, and then using the key, air filter, this cover, pop it in there, key or something flat screwdriver, just lift that up. And that is your positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start. So once you come inside the van, to turn on your 12 volt control panel, if you press the power button here, you'll be able to turn it on. This will indicate that you're hooked up with a little electricity sign here. It tells you the rating of your leisure battery and the amperage. Note that it does give a false reading when hooked up, so to get a true reflection of what charges in the leisure battery, unhook the vehicle. The solar panel will also go to sleep when you're hooked up because the solar panel can't compete with mains 230 volt on how much power to bring in. Obviously mains 230 brings in a hell of a lot more than the solar panel could ever bring in. And the it's currently 0.8 amps coming off the leisure battery at the moment. This is your pump. So turn that on, it tells you your 
vehicle so this is just your levels really when you turn your pump on so it tells you your vehicle and your leisure battery reading your fresh water and your waste water so at the moment it's telling you that it's nearly in the red there as it's, we've got 25 litres of fresh water on board this turns on your master switch for all your lights and then they all are individually switched around the van you've got your own light on the outside of the van you've got your dimmer switch which dims the lights down in the front lounge power transfer button so that now using the vehicle battery to operate and power the motorhome which it isn't advised it's only there as a, a feel safe really so if the leisure battery went completely flat and you needed power for five minutes you could use the engine battery but i never advise to do that because if you flatten the engine battery you're not going to be able to start the engine so always make sure that this one's not reading v it's reading L. The leisure battery is designed to power the motorhome because it's an auxiliary battery. Then you have your tank heaters. So if it's going to freeze overnight when you go to bed and you wear in the winter, just pop them on. It'll stop the water from freezing in the fresh and waste water tanks below the van. Up and down, you can just scroll through the pages. So there's the leisure battery. There's the time. There's the main control panel. So it's the AC 480 control panel. Power obviously leisure vehicle uh, leisure vehicle fresh and waste and that is your control panel so to operate your digital truma cp control panel to turn the system on and off you press and hold to turn it off press it once to turn it on and it'll come on and then to get into the menu you just press it once you'll notice you've got a thermometer with it in a van flashing at the top corner if you press enter this is how hot you want your vehicle so you've got all the way off in the summer when you don't want the heating or you've got all the way to 30 degrees in the winter when it's very cold so once you're happy so if we say 27 degrees there that's how hot i want the inside of the motorhome to be i'd press enter and that'll save that at 27 degrees now we've got a thermometer in some water this is how hot you want your water so if you don't have any water on board you'd have it on off 40 degrees for showering 60 degrees for doing your dishes but it's entirely up to yourself how hot you want your water or you've got boost which will turn off your heating and prioritize your water first but for this, we'll just say 60 degrees because we want the heating to run along with the water. Next, you've got what source you're heating the water and the vehicle off. So you've got gas. So make sure your gas bottle's on and it's turned on. You've got mix one, which is 750 watts of electric and gas. You've got mix two, which is... 1850 watts of electric plus gas so you'd use mix two in the winter if you're away and it was really cold use a mix two will boost the vehicle up the temperature because you're using both sources together then you can turn it over to electric so you've got electric 750 watts al1 and you've got al2 which is 1850 watts of electric don't waste your gas if you're on a site unless you're away and it's really cold and you're using mix two for the first 10 15 minutes then allow electric to continue to heat the motorhome and maintain the temperature because if you're on a site you've paid your site fees after all you'll not want to waste your gas then you've got your fan in the top right hand corner so eco or high or boost this is just a 12 volt assisted fan so eco will use less 12 volt high obviously uses more fan speed so it's going to use a little bit more 12 volt and boost uses full power on the fan which is going to use the most out of the 12 volt battery sleep with it on eco because it's a lot quieter than sleeping with it on anything else if you're going to sleep with the heating on in the winter you've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off just the once though clock in the middle and then spanner you can go all the way down to reset and to reset the control panel if you ever get a warning triangle in the middle reset preset click again and it will restart your control panel 
and then to turn off, press and hold and it'll say off and it'll completely turn itself off. So in the kitchen, you do have three gas, one electric burner on your hob. The electric one is this side, which indicates with the red light, but you've got to be hooked up for that to work and always make sure that's off before you hook the vehicle up because you wouldn't want to leave it, knock it when you've loaded the van, hook the van up, not know, because it, all that will happen is you'll just smash the glass because it'll get too warm and the glass will explode. Other than that, you do have So there you can see you've got three gas lit rings. If it takes a while, it's probably because it's been turned off so the gas lines are empty. So you will just have to, what I like to do is just push, listen for the gas, once you hear the gas, then ignite, but don't try and ignite air because it'll not ignite, it's gotta be gas. But because this system we fitted is new, I've just gassed this van this morning, so the lines were empty, so that's why it's taking slightly longer to get the gas going. But now the gas is through the vehicle, you've got your... Your hob. I shall see your grill. And underneath... You've got your oven. If you ever need any parts for your oven, there's a sticker here, so there's a model number. Let us know that number and we'll get the right parts for the oven should you ever need them or any other caravan and motorboat dealership. Underneath, gas taps. Gas taps are mainly for the technician when they annually check the vehicle over. Any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe, but you can isolate each individual appliance should you need to. So as long as your water pump's on, you'll be able to bring your hot water and cold water through the taps. I've had your hot water system on, so this is your hot water, and that water says quite hot. So your hot water system is working as it should, and the water's getting up to temperature. So to operate your Dometic fridge, so your turn on button is just here, so you just press and hold and you can turn it off, and then you can turn it on. You've got three sources the fridge could run on mains 230 volt which is like a household fridge because you're connected to mains gas which is off your gas supply off your bottles if you're well camping and battery and what the battery does is it isn't off the leisure battery it'll when the engine's running it'll send a feed from the alternator just to keep the fridge at the same temperature it was at before departing so if you've been on one site and you're ready to go from one site to another you've had your shopping in the fridge your fridge is nice and chilled it'll just keep it at that temperature when you're traveling until you either go back to electric or on a gas or if you're going away to your first site what i would do is if you're lucky enough to keep the van at home or able to get the van at home a few days before hook it up not only will it charge the leisure battery but put your sh your fridge on allow your fridge to cool go off in the car the day before and bring your shopping and load your fridge leave it overnight to chill and then when you're ready to travel you can select battery and as soon as you start the engine it'll get a feed and it'll just keep it like a giant cool box until you arrive on your site and hook the vehicle back up or you select gas this fridge is quite clever because it's got an automatic function so if you press the a it always prioritizes electric first because we're hooked up but if i was to unhook the vehicle now it'll switch over to gas without us touching the fridge or if i was to start the engine it'll go on to 12 volts so a stands for automatic energy selection and it'll always pick the best source available to the motorhome so you don't need to touch it but if you want to manually select you can just press which source you want note that when the engine's knocked off and you've arrived to be wild camping it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas this is a safety feature in case you've left your gas bottles left on and open and you're filling with diesel the last thing you want is it to spark in a petrol forecourt so it waits 20 minutes so it'll just flash it just simply won't light but you can override this by just pressing the gas and manually selecting the gas itself here you've got your temperature, so 5 being the coldest, so when pre-chilling have it on 5, in the summer you'd have to have it on 5. And then in the winter you may just want to turn it down to 3 or 4, because sometimes 5 can freeze 
the fridge over in the winter because it's just too it's cold anyway but in the when in the summer you may have to have it on all five because it'll be working hard to keep it cool one thing i will say is when you're not using it to turn it off clean it out but leave the door open so push the pin in slide these out it'll stop the door from shutting on itself so it's quite loose there to allow air to circulate in and out of the fridge below you've got a cooler box so it's not a fridge freezer box it's a fridge box and below that you've just got a drawer for your pots and pans to use your fed fit toilet make sure the pump's on because you will pump pressurizes the fresh water to the toilet for the flush and then to flush your toilet you press the blue button here but as soon as you flush the toilet the fan's going to kick in so to stop the fan it's flashing press it until it goes to a solid light Press the button, put a small amount of water into the toilet first, which helps lubricate the seal between the top of the toilet and the bottom of the cassette. And then before you use it, you want to open the blade. And the blade handle is this grey handle here. So you slide it to the right. Use the toilet. Flush the toilet after use. And then once you've finished, you would close it. If you've got any pink liquid, obviously this is a fresh water supply to the toilet. It doesn't have a separate header tank like most caravans and some motorhomes on the market. But what you can do is put the blue in the cassette or the green. If you've bought the pink, just put so much pink into an empty spray bottle, the rest water, and just spray the bowl. It'll do the same thing. It'll clean the bowl out and it'll just go into the cassette and there's no harm caused. A couple of green lights underneath the diagram of the cassette here indicates that it's full and it's time to empty it, rinse it and replenish it with chemical. You've got two lights here, the far one being the bathroom light, the closest one being the shower light, toilet re cabinet, toilet roll holder. This door can either be the bathroom toilet door or it can be the bedroom door depending on who you've got in the front you want to close the front off from the back if it's just the two of you shower screen magnetic shower doors so make sure they're closed when traveling and then just push them open you've got a hanging rail for wet towels but also doubles up for extra space in the if your wardrobe's full put a few hangers on here if you're going on a longer trip or hang your wet coats if you've been caught in the rain plastic tech shower screen and shower tray so just make sure no harsh chemicals are used on cleaning this microfiber cloths used no harsh harsh sponges or abrasive sponges used no bleaches just soap or stettel spray nothing harsh because you'll ruin the finish it's nice and glossy white you'll get a horrible cream looking stain on it and always make sure when you winterize you just unscrew your shower head from that pipe and this pipe here known as your shower pipe pop that down into your shower tray with the mixer tap open it just stops any water sitting and coiling in here and causing any damage when it could turn to ice in the colder temperatures so with this being the s model of the delaware you've got two long single beds but you still have the option of making it and it would double so in the wardrobe you can find two infill cushions and some makeup boards. The makeup boards go across here, so they fill this space. So they'll come this way, stop there, two cushions in here, and you've got a double bed across the width of the vehicle. But then you still would have to take that away to get into the wardrobe, up unless you want to light, you stand on the bed to get in. But that's just if you want to make it into a double. It is designed to be singles, but it does have that option. Storage storage drawer boiler is in here we'll get onto that in a moment on how to winterize the boiler but that's where it's located you've got a tv bracket and telly points in here if you want to put a tv in here and you've got overhead storage individual reading lamps which are switched on both sides of the bed and either corner so in the locker just above the driver's seat, 
This is your Sergeant EC500 power supply unit. So when you hook up to mains electric, this will do mains electric and 12 volt. The 12 volt are all the fuses here, which are listed on here, which fuse does which. So I would advise carrying some spare fuses with you just in case a fuse does blow. You can just pick it out, check it. If it's blown, replenish the fuse. Duplicate control panel. System shutdown button, so if you turn that off, it'll kill all 12 volt power of the vehicle. But you have to have that on to work anything, so you'd have to turn it back on. But if you're storing it, you may just want to turn that off. This side, you've got your main trips. So if the vehicle trips, you're hooked up. If it doesn't trip, you're not hooked up. And you've got your MCB. So if you trip the vehicle, try here before you try your main side. These all want to be pushed in, and they'll light up when you are hooked up. Um, obviously charger charges the leisure battery when hooked up space heater provides the uh, element for the heating system with power and the water heater that provides the element in the boiler to heat the water on electric above you've got your max view satellite system so this is fitted with a satellite dish so to turn it on you press the power button here and then it'll flash to two which is astro two but you want to put your dish up because your dish doesn't automatically go up so this red button here press and hold so press and hold there you are it starts to flash and that is putting the dish up it'll spin round until it finds astro two and then that flashing light needs to go up with solid light to say it's locked on and it's received the signal and then you can turn your telly on and you should be able to get a, sig you get a signal off the satellite. So as you can see there, your two lights have gone solid. So that's locked on Astro 2. Should you ever go down to the south of France, um, into Spain, Portugal, you will have to change it. Normally Astro 2 works in all of France, but as you start to descend into... Um, from Spain into Portugal you'll have to change it because it'll struggle to get a signal to change it when it's flashing when you turn it on you just press and hold sat and move it there's one to five you'll find the instructions for the max U system online it'll tell you which satellite you need for which country you can change it on here but then so this telly in the front isn't wired on the satellite because this came part of a media pack from auto trail when the vehicle was produced which is just a tv aerial so this is only free view and to retune your free view you press the aqt button here press and hold and do a retune and it'll start and find as many channels as i can if you are struggling with the aerial this has got an aerial on as well so what you watch that smoke alarm what you can do is you can adjust the aerial so always make sure the poles fully in and the nuts tighten before travel to stop the wind from snapping the aerial but if once you're on your site you can push it up tighten and use a toggle to direct the aerial so the toggle will direct it on the roof but look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing and in here you've got a booster so you can amplify the signal should you need to from your tv booster so you have to amplify it but obviously it's showing red now which just means it's got a weak signal it just takes you to adjust the aerial until that goes to green which means you've got a strong enough signal so this tv point beside the habitation door that the last owners put in is wired for satellite and the saw is the one in the back, so if you hit in the back, this one as well is wired for satellite. So if you want tellies for satellite when you're abroad, just put the tellies on here and you'll get a signal. Because the front one's only wired for free view. And now at the back of the van, so if you remove the mattress and then lift this slatted board up. Underneath here, you've got the location of your boiler. But not only your boiler, but your water pumps there as well. So your water pump's got a little filter on just here. So in the winter, when you're winterizing the van, it's very important that you drain the water out of here because if you don't, what will happen is the water could freeze in here when we're experiencing really cold temperatures in the winter. So what you need to do is, I always start from outside. So I start with the fresh, open the fresh tap outside and the waste and make sure all the water's out of those and the taps are left open. I'd come into the van, 
put the lights on but don't put any pump on or anything and I'd open all the taps throughout the van so all the mixer taps in the middle position of the mixer just to allow any water that's sitting on any plastic lines on the tap itself out remove the shower head from the shower hose and lie that down in the shower tray and then come to the boiler you can get in here as well if you want which is quite handy and lift this up and you can have all the water drain out underneath the boiler and leave that stood up when you're not using the van over the winter only push it back down when you want to refill the boiler with water once you've left that stood up i would put the pump on for 10 seconds no longer it just blows any water out of this pump itself so no water can freeze turn to ice and break the pump and then what you what i would also do is this little filter here is just a plastic cover so just unscrew it screw this off just so no water sits in here because last year we had a lot of customers um experience problems with the filter itself because they left water in it and it cracked this so they needed a replacement filter cap so just take them off for precaution just to stop the water from freezing in there when you come to reuse it obviously build the pump back up and turn the filter back down shut the tap like so shut the fresh in the waste fill the vehicle with water shut all the taps control panel on pump on cold side of the tap you'll get a pressurized flow of water hot side it'll cough and sprut out until you get a pressurized flow from one tap and all it's doing is it's transferring the water from the fresh water tank into the boiler once it's full you get a pressurized flow from the hot side and then you can do all the other taps and then you can keep the water just to check that your boiler is working for the season ahead but it's very important that you drain the boiler down otherwise you could become a victim of frost damage which is a costly repair bill because it's not covered under your warranty as it's your responsibility to drain your fresh water and your boiler down in the winter.